Christian Pentecostal Mission International, Houston, Texas, presents Your Hour of Miracle. Are you dejected? Rejected? Battered? Confused or depressed? I have good news for you, there is hope. The blind see, the lame walk, sinners are saved. Captives are set free. It is never a dull moment. Ministering, Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. M. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator. Come and experience the God of Wonder. CPM, Jesus Christ, Second is Lord. Chapter 7. Are we there? Let me first give us an introduction because I'm going to read only one verse. Chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles is the dedication of the, of the temple. Before the temple was built, the Ark of Covenant were put in the tabernacle. And then when David was elected by God to be the king, David said, God, I want to build you a temple. God said, no, you're not going to build me a temple because your hands are filled with blood. But your son, Solomon, will build me a temple. And then Solomon built the temple, very marvelous temple. And then he is the one that built the temple for God. And then when he had done building this temple, he now came to God to dedicate the temple. Chapter 7 is the day of the dedication of the temple. I will pick verse 7 first. It says, Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. This was the day of the dedication of the temple and the day of thanksgiving now when the children of israel we are done doing their dedication something happened in verse 12 and verse 12 says and the lord appeared to solomon by night and said unto him i've heard thy prayer and i've chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice now look at the promise if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Now, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Verse 15, now my eyes shall be opened, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now, I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. There is something that has been happening within the week, and that is the issue of the announcement of President Trump that he is recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And then he is moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Let me explain something to us. When he was done the announcement, there is trouble all over the world. What Trump came to do is to fulfill prophecy. The last thing that has been expected for the rapture is for the desolation of the temple, which is the sacrifice that brings the solution to be offered. And for that sacrifice that brings the solution to be offered, the temple must be rebuilt. Why is the temple not being rebuilt? On the site where the temple is supposed to be, on my site, what is sitting there today is a mosque. Second to the highest mosque of Islam is sitting on that particular site where we have Solomon's temple. Not even a church, but a mosque. The Palestinians are claiming Jerusalem.
But I wonder why they should claim Jerusalem because history is clear about it. I don't know if I'm right, please correct me. Palestine, are they the same Philistines of the Bible? Because they, the name sounds and looks alike. Now, these people have been fighting Israel over their land. Okay, maybe you don't know the history, you may not understand. Now, before 1949, Israel does not have a place to stay. They were despised all over the world. Many of them were in Germany and so many other places. I think it was in 1949 that they decided to go back to their land. But before they went back to their land, other people have taken over the land. Which is the Palestinians we are talking about. And when they came, they said, no, this place belongs to us. And the Palestinians are saying, no, we have been here before you. Do you understand the problem now? So they are now fighting to make sure Israel cannot stay. And Israel is very minute among every other people in the Middle East. And they are fighting them. But the more they fight them, the more God fights for them. But there's a reason why Israel cannot be destroyed. And that is this. They know how to thank God. They know how to thank God. Reverend Dan C. Daniel storms Houston with Miracle Explosion for 2018. Right now, the Blind Sea. The Blind Sea. The Blind Sea. The Blind Sea. The Lame Walk. Deaf and Dumb Speak. Captives are set free. Sinners are saved. Venue Christian Pentecostal Mission International. 11309 Bisonet Street, Houston, Texas, 77099. Date, Wednesday 21st to Sunday 25th February 2018. Time, 7 p.m. daily, Tuesdays, 12 o'clock noon, Fridays, 10 p.m. I'm ready now, the power of God is upon me now, I'm ready, I'm waiting for you. Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. This program is a miracle service. It's not a day of too much of talk talk. It's a day of the manifestation of the power of God. Therefore, something will happen this morning. Holy God! That's the power. That's the power. Yes, yes. <laughs> I said it. I said it. Oh my God, what an awesome anointing. What a power. What a step. What a step. What a step. What a step. What a power. What a power. What a power. What a power. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. L. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator, come and experience the God of Wonder. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. You know how to appreciate God. When God delivered Israel from Egypt, He instituted the Passover. Also, when America was established, an annual national holiday marked by religious observances, and the traditional meal, including turkey, was established by the pilgrims. Of course, most of us know why how America was established. The pilgrims, we call them the Puritans, they were being persecuted in England. And when they were being persecuted, they left there, they want to find a new land, and they found North America. These are Christians. These people are those that we are against the Catholic and the African movement. And the way they established this land, Many of them we are dying. Diseases we are, we are we are hitting them. And along the line, God helped them, they survive. And they established a day. Initially, it used to be in November. They say, let us thank God for this purpose. And today, if correct me if I'm wrong, I think America is the only nation that had a, a particular day they thank God. You know that they will have hijacked it and turned it to turkey eating day. Many people don't understand what the Thanksgiving is all about, but they must eat turkey on that day, shall? They must eat turkey. They must eat turkey. Praise the Lord. But thank God, they don't understand. But the main reason for Thanksgiving Day is, Father, we appreciate you for what you have done for us. We give you the glory for everything. They are trying to give glory back to God, to honor him, to honor him for what he has done. In thanksgiving, you are putting God the first place. Why should we thank God? 
Number one, do you want to strengthen your spiritual life? Do you want to get God's perspective on the issues you face? If so, then you want to understand thanksgiving in a much deeper way. Do you want your life to be strengthened? We're not talking about strengthening your life. I'm not talking about physical strength only. Physical strength, financial strength, spiritual strength. Do you want it to be strengthened? Learn how to thank God. If there is no reason for you to learn how to thank God, if there's nothing to show you, why not take America as a case study? There's nobody, there's no nation in the world that can stand America today. I used to wonder, notwithstanding how so many people are corrupt here, listen to me, the immorality in America is higher than the one in Nigeria. I've lived in both places, I can tell you by myself. But God is still holding this nation. Why? They know how to put God first in everything they do. They know how to put God first in everything they do. If you watch most of the inventors that invented so many things, I think 90% of inventors came from America. They were not originally born Americans. A still is not a born American, it's a German. But he came to America, they gave American citizenship and so many others like that. But why is it supposed to be America? Because in God we trust. They put their trust in God and they stand firm with him. There's an evil program that says if you want to run by yourself, you will run and you get tired. But if you put God first in everything you do, you will see God standing first in that particular thing. Thanksgiving, number one, brings God on the same. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, God inhabits the praises of his people. When you enter into thanksgiving and praise, you invite God's glory. You invite his presence to fill your life and your situation. At times of high praise, the Shekinah glory of God will fill the whole place with his sweet presence. Thanksgiving changes the atmosphere, changes the scene. I did not notice when you are in a big problem and it looks like there is no way out. Please stop praying. That is not the time to pray. That is the time to begin to sing and thank God. That is the time to call him the, the names. That is the time to tell him who he is. And that is time for him to remember what he has done for you before. And begin to thank him because of what he has done. You see him do another thing for you. Many people don't understand this. When they run into a problem and it becomes too difficult, they will begin to cry. God is not moved by your cries, but God is moved by your appreciation. Praise the Lord. It is your thanksgiving that brings the presence of God. Do you want financial growth? Learn how to thank God for the one he has done. There is an evil son that says, Oh, me para your son. Oh, me who Jehovah me para your son. Anytime I talk about Thanksgiving, pardon me to say I love the Yoruba tribe of Africa. They know how to pray, they know how to thank. They know, they know how to call God beautiful, beautiful names. I wish I can call God those Yoruba names they used to call God. They know how to honor Him, they know how to respect God. Reverend Dan C. Daniel storms Houston with Miracle Explosion for 2018. Oh, the Blind Sea. The lame walk. Deaf and dumb speak. Captives are set free. Sinners are saved. Venue Christian Pentecostal Mission International. 11309 Bisonet Street, Houston, Texas. 77099. Date Wednesday, 21st to Sunday, 25th February 2018. Time. 7 p.m. daily, Tuesdays, 12 o'clock noon, Fridays, 10 p.m. I'm ready now, the power of God is upon me now, I'm ready, I'm waiting for you. Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. This program is a miracle service. It's not a day of too much of talk talk. It's a day of the manifestation of the power of God. Therefore, something will happen this morning. Holy God! the power. That's the power. Yes, yes. Ha, ha. I said it. I said it. Oh my God. What an awesome anointing. What a power. What's that? What's that? What's that?
Watch yourself, watch yourself. What the power, what the power. Let the power is there. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, somebody help. That's the power. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, that's the power. That's the power, that's the power. Oh my God, look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. The anointing is here. The anointing is there. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The power, the power. Ah, that's it. The power, come on. That's number two. Yes, Lord. God. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. M. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator. Come and experience the God of Wonder. CPM, Jesus Christ Hello, is Lord. Lord. When you get into trouble, stop praying. Try thanking Him. Try praising God. Oh, I have the scripture says, Paul and Silas, they sang and they praised, and the Holy Ghost came down. Do you want to experience the presence of God? Go into thanksgiving. I think it's too difficult for you. Forget about the difficulty. I start talking about the glory of God. Your thanksgiving brings down the glory of God. Thanksgiving puts challenges in perspective. That's number two. Psalm 8 verse 1 reminds you, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. Thanksgiving and praise reminds you just how powerful your God is. He is the creator of the universe. Nothing is beneath his notice. If he's your God, how can he lose? Thanksgiving makes you know how big your God is and how small your problem is. When problem comes up, people begin to listen to and say, liar. Listen to me. I've come to the that when you say that word, you are praising the devil because that is whom he is. You are calling him whom he is. So you are praising him. Instead of you saying Satan is a liar, forget about Satan and what he's doing. We already know he's a liar. Begin to thank God. Begin to praise him. Begin to glorify him. At that particular moment, the devil will get confused. When you begin to thank God in the face of your problem, you will discover that your problem will become so small. If the devil knocks at your door, open it with my faith. You think the devil will disappear. But if you open it with fear, he will enter your room. When problem comes, meet those problems with thanksgiving. The secret to my survival in America is that when challenges become too much for me, and I pray, 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 it looks as if there's no out. I'll leave those things that I'll face God. I'll forget what the problems I'll just face God. Now, me and God, I'll begin to thank God. I'll come. Those of you that I know how to worship this God, I know how to praise this day. I'll just, listen up, look at me. I'm more of a worshiper than a prayer. -er. I do less of praying and more of worship. Because I discovered that if I want to bring that in, presence of God. There's a triangular formula that God gave me. He said when your presence goes up, his presence comes down. The miracle will begin to take place. You want to bring down the presence of God? Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. You will see his presence come down. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Almighty. The creator of the universe. There's no problem that is as big as your God. So because of how, how big your problem is, start thinking about the majesty of the creator that created you. And the good thing is that you are in his own side. If God is for us, who can be against us? Nobody. But men and brethren, that problem is not bigger than God. Yes. Don't allow your problem to limit you from praising your God. Yes. Don't allow discouragement to come into your situation and you forgot what God has done today. I tell people that you don't need faith for God to repeat a miracle. You only need fact. Did God heal him blind yesterday? Yes, he did. Therefore, I don't need faith to say, Father, heal this blind. I said, Papa, remember, you did it yesterday. And because you did it yesterday, Father, I say, I thank you. I give you glory for the fact that you healed the blind yesterday. I know that, I know that, I know that you healed this blind. There will come a time in your life, there is no food to eat. And the business is crumbling. Say, Father, you took me through the one that happened yesterday. You will take me through this one. Yes, sir. Ah, that sickness looks as if it's going to take your life. Say, Father, I know that I know that I know that I will not die but live to declare your goodness because you said so. Yes. Oh, the Bible said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For God is 
with me. And if God is with you, there's nothing the devil can do unto you. And I'm talking to somebody this morning. Don't focus on that problem. Focus on God. Focus on Him. Look unto Him, the author and the finisher of your faith. Number three, thanksgiving focuses your mind on the right subject. Thanksgiving focuses your mind on what? The right subject. When challenges arise, it is easy to allow them to play on a loop inside your head. But thanksgiving and praise breaks that loop. It helps you to refocus your attention on the one who is greater than every challenge. Just read through King James, I mean King, King David's Psalms. <laughs> As King David wrote one psalm. He said, I have passed, you are, you are allowed men to ride over our heads. We pass through waters. <laughs> we pass through fire. But you do what? You brought us to the world. Reverend Dan C. Daniel storms Houston with miracle explosion for 2018. Right now, the blind sea. The lame walk. Deaf and dumb speak. Captives are set free. Sinners are saved. Venue Christian Pentecostal Mission International. 11309 Bisonet Street, Houston, Texas. 77099. Date Wednesday, 21st to Sunday, 25th February 2018. Time 7 p.m. daily, Tuesdays, 12 o'clock noon, Fridays, 10 p.m. I'm ready now. The power of God is upon me now. I'm ready. I'm waiting for you. Dr. Frank Benjamin, host. This program is a miracle service. It's not a day of too much of talk talk. It's a day of the manifestation of the power of God. Therefore, something will happen this morning. Holy God! Yes, yes. Ha, ha, ha. I said it. I said it. Oh my God! What an awesome anointing! What a power! What a step! What a step! What a step! What a step! What a power! What a power! When the power is there, that's the power. That's the power. That's the power. Somebody help! That's the power. 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 Oh my God! Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. Look at what God is doing here. The anointing is 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 here. Yes, Lord. Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the general overseer, and Reverend Dr. L. Ezekiel, the national and international coordinator, come and experience the God of wonder. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. Is that road that is filled with fire and water is the route to the worthy place. Don't allow your life to be troubled. In that problem, God is there, and God cannot lose the war. He can't. He cannot. The problem we have is that instead of us focusing on God, we are focused on the problem. Instead of us to thank God, we are thinking of how can I, you see, it happened to me. Oh, you know, you know what happened over the last two years? I was so disorganized. I was so disorganized. I was, I was praying and I was trying to imagine how would God do it. And I forgot that this God I'm talking about is a specialist. And then if he is a specialist in impossibilities, it's when the things become possible that he comes in. It's when you have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and there's no way. They cast your cares upon him. For he does what? He cares for you. Cast it upon him. And then when you cast the cares upon him, forget about it. Stop thinking of how the problem will be solved. Because you cannot even solve that problem. In fact, everybody I met that I, wanted, that I wanted to help me to solve the problem, they all disappointed me. At the end of the day, I, I got, I got, I, I was like, what, what else can I do? I said, there's nothing I can do, but to say what? Father, we thank you. And at the end of the day, there was a reason to thank this God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord now. Something happened to me so many years ago. Before that, it, it was an accident. But before that accident happened, God showed me. And I prayed over it. And I thought it was fast. And all of a sudden, I was driving. And my car 
lost break. At that time, I began to plan, I don't know what to do. At that same particular time, somebody was crossing. Before I know it, pim, I hit the man. We rushed off. What this happened in Nigeria, we rushed him to the hospital. Get him to the hospital, they didn't want to attend to us. We have to rush him to the hospital in Sulu. They have to rush him to the hospital in Lagos Island. The next morning I call, they say the man is dead. I say, yeah. Not in America, I'm talking about Nigeria, where there's no law. <laughs> in Nigeria, where there is no law. So many things began to go on. One man said, run away. Another man said, go to the car. Another man said, I sat down and said, what do I do? I called my mom and said, what do I do? Mom said, don't give up. And fortunately, the policemen did not take any of my information. They did not take any of my contacts. Some of you Americans may not understand. They're not, there was nothing. There was nothing to hold me to that. Praise the Lord. God said, go. I went to the, to the nearest police station for where the accident happened. They said, ah. The first question they asked me was, ah, how did you, oh, why did you come? Because normally, a, a, a normal Nigerian man will forget about that running because there's no information, there's no contact. But I went and submitted myself to the police. They were confused. Praise the Lord. They said, this is the first time they have seen somebody do this. And when I introduced myself as a pastor, they say, no. To call it long story short, God took control of everything. And got into the mind of the policemen. They did the case the normal way they were supposed to do it. There was no trouble anywhere. Why? Because I know how to thank God. And when I came out, I don't know what else to do. I called the whole church. It's time for us to thank this God. If not for God, men and brethren, I should have been in jail by now. Of course, those from Nigeria, you understand what I'm talking about. But God delivered me. I have a reason to thank this God. One day, I sat down and I looked back to my beginning. I looked back to where I'm coming from. There was a, something I told us that one day, I thought that I was making joke of it. Men and brethren, I was, most of you here are better than me, if not all of you. But I was so poor that poverty was synonymous to my second name. We are living in one room in Amukoko, precisely on one of these streets. Those of you that come from Nigeria, you know what Amukoko is known for. And in that one room, there were eight of us in that one room. Me, my mom, and my siblings, eight of us in one room. When it is raining. The rain comes from up, comes from the window, comes from down. One day I was sleeping and I was dreaming. And in that dream, I was floating on a water bed and it was so, so sweet and so cool. Air. And I was snoring in the dream. You know? <laughs> that was the only day, in fact, I enjoyed my sleep. Because other times, we breathed in carbon dioxide and breathed out carbon dioxide because there was no oxygen in that house. But that day, it was so cool, I was enjoying my sleep. All of a sudden, I woke up. True, true, I was on a water bed because water had carried my bed. That was how poor I was. I was so poor that I don't have money to buy clothes. I used to. I have a friend of mine, he's double my size. I will take his clothes and I'll begin to sew it by myself. That was how poor I was. But if God can bring me out of that poverty and plant me on the mountain top today, I have a reason to thank this God.
TPM, Jesus Christ is Lord.